Hello, my brothers and sisters. How are you guys doing? I hope everyone is fine. So, our story for today is about Nigeria. Like I have mentioned before on this show, that Nigeria is a country that we all love very much. And uh, we would all love to see Nigeria succeed. We would all love to see Nigeria develop and become an industrialized nation. You know, Nigeria is the most populated country in Africa, and it is the highest producer of crude oil in Africa. So, this shouldn't be any reason why Nigeria shouldn't become a developing country like China or India or Brazil or even South Africa, because I do believe they have all the potentials to become a developed or a developing nation. So, what I am going to talk about today is about the crude oil tariff in Nigeria. Do you know that Nigeria loses billions upon billions of dollars every year due to crude oil tariff? The quantity of oil that is being stolen is so, so much. But before I continue and give you my own personal opinion, uh, about what might be the cause of this crude oil tavery. First, I would like you to share your thoughts with us in the comment section. In your own opinion, what is the major cause of crude oil tavery in Nigeria? What is pushing Nigerians into engaging in such a difficult and uh, very risky business of stealing crude oil let us know in the comment section below so now watch this video in the air on land and at sea the nigerian military is under strict orders to end the plundering of the country's oil when security forces returned to the site they destroyed five weeks earlier they encountered oil thieves as troops chased them the vandals ran towards their boats, hidden in the creeks. One is captured. In terms of crushing these uh, illegal uh, refining sites, we have crushed thousands of them. As you are destroying one site, before you get to the other one, another one is springing up again. This pipeline is one of the most frequently vandalized in the country. It delivers half a million barrels of oil a day to an export terminal. But for the past five months, not a drop was delivered as the operator, Shell, was forced to shut it down. We've had situations where when we go into cooking camps, IRS camps like this, they've set fire to the camps, you know, endangering us and um, our equipment. Most of the stolen crude is ferried to larger vessels at sea by barges like these, which are usually hard to apprehend. Flying over the creeks, the devastation caused by oil bunkering is massive. Hidden under tree canopies, the oil thieves are putting finishing touches to this facility, capable of refining tens of thousands of gallons a day. And instead of using firewood, they now steal gas to distill the crude. Military commanders say there are hundreds of these illegal distilleries scattered across the oil producing delta. In addition to bleeding the economy dry, the operations also damage the environment because they are not properly equipped to process crude oil. The plunder of Nigeria's oil has left the country unable to meet its OPEC quota. Activities are going on as I speak to you now. Uh, so much collaboration going on with the communities to make sure that they are also involved in the process of protecting these assets. The company looks up to the renewed clampdown to return to profitability. But with all thieves continuously changing their tactics, it could be a long while before that will happen. Okay, my brothers and sisters, this particular problem has been ongoing for a very long time. I am from Cameroon. So I know about this issue very well because Cameroon is next door to Nigeria. Crude oil tavery is not something that started today. It has been ongoing for many, many years now. 
And you will see the authorities, they will come out and they will talk and they will talk and they will talk. And then they will go back and nothing is being done. Sometimes I feel like the Nigeria authorities are just handling the symptoms of the problem, but not the problem itself. They always look for a way to dodge the problem and hang on on the symptoms. You will see them saying that they are deploying more soldiers or more uniformed men to kind of like secure the area, to kind of like stop people from stealing crude oil. But nothing will be done, you know, because I think that um, for people to engage in such a risky venture just so they can survive, it means that things are really, really difficult for them. Because if someone who is living a comfortable life or who has something to eat and something to look forward to will not engage in this kind of risky operation. So I think that the Nigerian authorities should look for the root cause of this problem. And they should not just look at it, but they should try to get it solved. If they do not do that, nothing will be done because this is not a problem that started today. Bad governance in Nigeria has led people to engage in stuff like this. This is just my own personal opinion. And I know most of you guys out there will agree with me. The common people in the street, they have all been abandoned. Yes, they have all been abandoned. People don't have jobs to do. People cannot feed their families. People are suffering. So they have no choice but to engage in this kind of risky operations. So the people doing it really, really understand the risks in it. But they still do it anyway because they have no other choice. They have no other choice. So that is why I have always been crying on my show that most African countries lack good governance. That is what we lack in Africa. We lack good governance. There are many problems that we Africans are facing that if our leaders come up and look into these problems and bring in lasting solutions, we will all live happily. But sometimes I feel like, or sometimes I think, they don't do it on purpose. Because you ask yourself this question again and again and again. Nigeria is not the only oil producing nation in the world. There are many other countries producing oil. In fact, Nigeria is the fifth oil producing country in the world. You don't hear other countries complaining about crude oil thievery. Only Nigeria. So that tells you that there is a serious problem in Nigeria. And the leadership in Nigeria is very poor. So my brothers and sisters, until the Nigerian authority will be serious to really match words with action, to really walk the talking, nothing will change. Billions upon billions of crude oil dollars will be stolen by the locals. And Nigeria government will keep on crying about this. It's sad. It's sad that a country like Nigeria, with all its wealth, that its people are supposed to be living happily. But still yet, many people in Nigeria are suffering. Because of what? Bad governance. The politicians only care about themselves. They have embezzled so much money and they don't even care about the common man. But my brothers and sisters, I know this is a very touching story. That is, uh, when, I, when I talk about things like this, I get too emotional because I think that 
there is a way for all of us to live happily if only our leaders do their part. But you know, most of them won't and we will be stuck in this situation or in this position. So my brothers and sisters in Nigeria, please share your thoughts with us, okay? On what do you think about Kut Oyetevri in your humble country, Nigeria? And should the government of Nigeria be crying about the amount of money they are losing every year because of this issue? And the second one, do you really think that the Nigerian government really, really want to resolve this problem? Or they are just doing what we call window dressing, just trying to talk about the symptoms instead of talking about the real problem, about the illness? Let us know in the comment section below. Like always, we love hearing your thoughts and opinions on the topics that we cover on this show. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cut off.